Wow. Okay. Lawlers, welcome to the Beginner's Guide to Vigo. Um, we're going to add a little flavor text for you guys in this one. So, a background on this champ. Once the ruler of a long-lost kingdom, Vigo perished over a thousand years ago when his attempt to bring his wife back from the dead triggered the magical catastrophe known as Runation. Transformed into a powerful, unliving wraith, tortured by obsessive longing for his centuries-dead queen, Vigo now stands as the Rune King, controlling the dead heroines as he scours Runeterra for anything that might one day restore her, destroying all in his path as the black mist pours endlessly from his cruel, broken heart. So if that sounds like a story that you resonate with, this could be the champ for you. Um, essentially, he's a fighter. He obviously is going to be using the Blade of the Rune King here, this massive green sword. It kind of makes no sense with this handle. It would be hitting him every time he swung it, but that's cool. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a champ that you're going to get in into the you know face of battle with. You're going to be using a lot of your abilities. It's going to be auto attack heavy, and you're going to be counting on your life steal to really survive. So um, there's a few mechanics that you can play with him. Overall, this is quite an easy champ. The difficulty in mastering him comes with his ultimate and passive use. So let's quickly spawn a practice dummy here and learn a few of our abilities here in the practice mode. So we're just going to level up to level 3 and we'll auto refresh cooldowns for now just so that we can learn everything pretty quick. So the first ability you want to learn with Vigo and max out is your Q, the Blade of the Rune King. So passively it has a really nice passive. It basically lets all of your attacks deal an additional 2% current health physical damage and if you use an ability within a recent amount of time your auto attacks are going to strike twice after you use that ability so you know right now passively just attacking it's going to deal a little extra percent health damage on each of your auto attacks so this is great against tanks or beefier targets that you're going to mostly face up in the top lane or if you're playing them jungle against beefier jungles um, the active part of this is the stab forward so you can think of this like a Yasuo Q or a Yon Q um, it's a low cooldown range skill shot stab okay so so where the passive comes in on this with the actual active is if you stab your next auto attack you can see he did like those two swings so we'll just watch the animations you guys can catch that so one auto attack is just a big swing like that and then after using ability passively with Viego you get to strike twice so watch the strike boom boom so he does a little like kind of two stabs on that one okay so this is really important for utilizing your abilities to pump up more auto attack damage right because this is going to be an auto attack heavy champion so you're going to auto Q auto auto that would be like a very basic level one combo if someone stepped up to you and wanted to fight okay second ability you're going to learn in lane most of the time is going to be your W Spectral Maw. So this adds a little bit of crowd control to Vigo's kit so you can stun people which is really really good. It also adds some mobility so there's two parts to this okay. When you click it for the first time he's going to dash and throw a little goblet of mist that if it hits someone it's going to stun them okay. So it's a skill shot ability but the longer you hold this the longer that goblet can fire and then it, it can stun people at quite a good range. You can see here this practice dummy it's pretty far from us. If we just hold this ability, can't quite stun him yet, and honestly, that's pretty tilting that the animation hits him, but it doesn't stun, so be careful for that in your games. But let's say we're standing here, right? We're going to stun that unit, okay? So the fact that you have a stun built in as a fighter and, you know, your zero mana cost champion is pretty pretty amazing. And if you didn't want to stun, you could still use this ability to escape a gank like that by just tapping it really quick. That lets you just dash instantly. Um, you can't go through walls with this though. That's the one thing to note, okay? So most dashes for champions, even small ones, let you go over small walls and thin walls. This one does not let you do that. So you really need to just think of this ability as something that lets you engage and stun or maybe escape and, and disengage, right? So usually kind of any mobility um, for a champion, you just have two ways to use it, engage, disengage, so just keep that in mind with Viego, okay? So using these two abilities though, and our passive, we know that every time we use an ability, we can strike twice with an auto. So a normal combo with Viego then when you learn these two abilities would be Q, auto, auto, W, auto, auto, 
okay? So that's going to deal a good chunk of damage. It works out to be a pretty fast combo, but the key on this combo and the runes you're going to take specifically with Vigo is going to be Conquer. If you land that combo just to Q, auto, auto, W, auto, auto, you fully stack your Conquer, and that means that every single auto you do now with Conquer is going to pump out a heck of a lot more damage, and it's also going to heal you, okay? It's going to heal you by what's the current patch right now? 9% of the damage dealt for champion. Okay, so this is massive for Vigo. You gotta make sure you take this rune set and you have to get good at just landing this combo successfully on a champion. You could open with the W, you don't have to open with the Q, so you could W, auto, auto, Q, auto, auto. Just know that landing both those abilities with the two autos after them is gonna fully stack your Conqueror. That's a massive little trick you gotta know with this character. If you feel like you're not winning fights or you're just getting steamrolled when you go and actually try and trade with someone, it's probably because you haven't stacked your Conqueror. Okay, so just make sure you get good at boom, 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 boom. Now your conquer is up, and now we can just keep auto attacking this person as long as we want. Okay, the last basic ability with Vigo is Herald Path. So this is a pretty cool ability. Um, it basically shoots out some mist, and if it hits terrain, it surrounds the entire terrain. Okay, and while you're in the mist, you have a, your camouflage number one, so they can't see you unless they're basically right next to you. You have extra move speed, and you have extra attack speed. So before we talk about the actual bonuses of of the movement speed and the attack speed. I'll just show you how it kind of covers terrain. So if you throw it and it hits terrain, it's going to cover all of that terrain. And anytime you're moving within this mist, you can see we're camouflaged and we have a little bit more move speed, right? We're moving a little bit faster. So you can throw it on any terrain and it's going to cover it. It's actually pretty broken in terms of covers the entire terrain, right? So this lets you do a couple things in terms of move speed. If you want to join, let's say you're playing Vigo top lane and you want to join a scuttle fight, at, uh, at Scuttle in the river with your jungler, you could cast it and start to move down instantly, right? So you get a little bit more move speeds, so you can join fights a little bit faster. You'll see that um, this exclamation mark above your head when champions can, can actually see you and you're not camouflaged anymore, okay? The other thing this is good for is obviously the attack speed bonus it gives you in fights. So even if you don't have the opportunity to cast it on a wall, if you know you're going to be an extended trade with a champion and you want a little bit more attack speed, you can just cast it straight like this. And basically in the area that you're dueling, you're going to have that extra attack speed and move speed, okay? If you're playing him jungle, there's a couple of the things you can do with him, like you can play mind games. If you, you know, if your laner is pushed up and they need help, but you want to go get your red buff, for example, you can cast it on this wall, then go get your red buff, and this champ mid lane is going to be like, oh crap, Vigo's nearby. He threw the mist out, right? So like you can start to play a little bit of mind games, but generally in lane, if you're playing him top or mid, what you're going to use it for is that attack speed boost or to basically. Um, get to a river fight a little bit faster. Okay, so knowing that we have these three abilities, your basic trades and combos against champs in lane are basically going to look like either you're going to start with an auto if they're a melee champ, or maybe you try and start with a W to catch them if they're a ranged champ. You're going to do those double autos, stack your conquer, and then just keep fighting. If they want to keep fighting with you, you can cast your E on them and just keep going, right? Now, ideally, if you were fighting in the top lane, let's say, and there was a champ up here, and you get into a big duel, ideally you'd want to see if you can do those duels closer to walls, obviously, so that when you cast your E, you can fight in that E to a greater area, right? If you just kind of fight them in a little area of E like this, you have a lot less room to play with and wiggle with, okay? so. That's your basic abilities. Now, the two parts of Vigo that make him hard to play, because so far, in my opinion, all of these are pretty easy things to do, right? Like the Q, you'll just get good at landing. It's like a Yasuo Q, and you can spam it, so honestly, it's not that hard. Your W, yeah, it's a little tricky. You're going to have to learn the cast range and, you know, get good at hitting the stun, but the fact that you have a stun with a zero mana cost champ is pretty, pretty crazy, in my opinion. Um, and then the E, you're just going to have fun with casting on walls or using it in your duels, right? Pretty simple stuff. Auto attack heavy champ, you're just going to try and face roll and key smash in most of your fights. Where this guy becomes difficult is in Sovereign's domain, okay? So we're going to have to actually probably show this in lane against some bots to really get you guys comfortable with understanding what this is. But essentially, if somebody dies near him that he's attacked, so he doesn't have to be the one to kill them, but if somebody dies within three seconds of Ego hitting them, there's a wraith that spawns for that champion. And the easiest way to think about this is basically a Silas ultimate. You can 
become that champion instead of just taking their ult. You become that champion for a short amount of time. Okay, during your your I guess possession of that champion's wraith, you can use all of their basic abilities. So let's say we possess the Yasuo. We could use his Q. We could use his W for the wind wall. We could use E for the dash. You basically become that champion. While you're that champion, you also gain some move speed and your passive from the blade of the Rune King that you have still applies. So that means that if you use an ability, your next auto attack is going to deal um, two strikes. Okay, so all like basic stuff there all right where it's difficult is knowing if it's worth taking that champion's wraith over right like let's say you're in a massive fight you're in a duel do you want to become alistar or, or or not would you rather stay as vigo and keep pumping out your q's and your w's and stunning people is that kit better for that situation right so similar to the difficulty that comes with playing silas with knowing which alts to steal when to use them what comps are better for those alts it's the same with vigo so basic ability wise you're gonna get good at this guy pretty quick if you just put a couple games into him the basic abilities are pretty easy in his kit right you're just auto attacking where you're gonna dump a lot of games into and become like really skilled with this champion is actually being skilled with most of the champions in the game so if you're somebody who likes to bounce around and play a lot of different champs this actually might be a good champ for you to start to main because that means that you can actually be able to play a bunch of different champs while you're playing Vigo. Okay? Now, his ultimate, if we level up to six here, it's a little bit less complicated than his passive. But how it how it works into this is his ult is a, is a short dash mixed in with like execute damage. So the more health that they have missing, the more it's going to deal damage. There's another aspect of it that if you cast it, nearby enemies are knocked back and take some physical damage. But essentially, what it is, it's a short dash with an execute. Okay? So. Again, easiest way, if you've ever played Darius, you can kind of think about it like this. It's a short dash with an execute kind of thing, right? Okay, where this comes into play is you can use your R before your level 6 if you take over a champion. I, I know, bear with me here. If you take over a champion, you get a free cast on your ultimate. Okay, so let's say we killed somebody, we take over their body. That means now essentially we get a free cast of our R and we can use it on anything that we want. We could even use it on minions, right? Like you can use it on anything that you want. And then you'll still have your cooldown. Okay, so we're going to have to use this in lane against some bots to really show this. But again, this just plays into the complexity of, of Vigo's kit in terms of knowing who to potentially ultimate in a fight and steal the wraith, how you can combo off by stealing other people's dead wraith bodies, taking them over and getting free casts on your ultimate. In that sense, you can reset your ultimate many, many times. So this champ has the potential to be very very broken he's a manless champ he's got low cooldown stab on his q he's got no mana stun on his w he's got passively auto attack resets for two strikes he's got health gain he's got camouflage he's got a dash he's got you know he's got a lot of stuff in his kit and then you pair all that up with the ability to take over other champions and reset your ultimate it can be very very scary so we're going to jump into a bot game now and just try and use this kit in lane against an enemy champ and see how we go so i'll catch you guys in a second all right, so we're here in the bot game. We're going to be running mid lane right now just to have some fun against enemy champion. In terms of starting items with Vigo, you want to pick up Doran's shield or Doran's blade uh, pretty much all the time, depending on which matchup you're in. If you're a poke heavy, you can go Doran's shield. If you're in more of a, a brawling, dueling matchup, you can go the Doran's blade. Personal preference, uh, still at the end of the day, both can work. Both are pretty strong items right now. Um, other items that you're going to be building into, and we'll talk about this as we go, but it's pretty well represented in the shop here. You're going to build Brilliant of the Rune King first, and then probably into a Kraken Slayer into most of your games. That's going to be your core item set. Okay, so we've talked about basic abilities a little bit already. Um, in this lane, we're going to still pick up Q first, and we're just going to look for good trades and combos. Now, level one, if you're not against a melee champ, you're just going to look to poke them with your Q, kind of through minions like that, and then if they give you the opportunity, you're going to get that double auto attack off after you use your Q. So, the cooldown's pretty low on Q, so you can see here we can spam it. Boom, boom, and then I'm going to disengage okay after you use that combo at least level one you don't want to stay in the fight for too long depending on the champ that you're against if you can get that Q damage off with the double auto that's all you need early and then just kind of back out don't take too much minion aggro okay when we get to level two we can look for bigger trades and get our fully stacked conquer up so you know boom boom and then walk away okay 
You just have fun fishing at level one with your with your Q. Now level two, we can either use a W or the Q to engage first. Okay, so let's try and start with the Q auto auto. Right? If we miss, that's fine. W, auto, auto. Now we have our fully stacked conquer, so now we want to keep fighting. So level 2 is when you really unlock um, strong laning with this character because you can fully stack that conquer off. Now, W, the stun on it, if there's a minion in front, will block it, okay? See how it hit that minion there? So you have to make sure if you want to use your W in the trade to really pop that conquer, you have a clear line into the champ. So if they step up, you can try and go for it, but if a minion gets in the way, it's going to stop that and you won't be able to fully proc your conquer, okay? Now, because Viego has kind of that double auto attack after an ability, and he has a very low cooldown Q, similar to Yasuo, you might have a Yasuo Syndrome, and get into this position where you keep pushing waves right up to their turret, and you're kind of stuck here, and you know, susceptible to ganks. So just make sure if you get into this position, you recognize that, okay, you know what, it's actually better with Vigo to maybe run a champ down and stun them in an area where I can fight away from their turret, at least initially. So try and shove that wave in if you're in this spot focus your abilities on the wave get it shoved in and then you can let it bounce back out and reset okay so let's get into a position here we're maxing out our Q I'm gonna try and play pretty aggressively on this Wukong try and get that stun off boom I'm somehow auto attacking minions instead you're gonna have to be careful for that even if you get your stun off that you auto attack them so let's try this again we're gonna move up here W auto auto Q just out of range but you can see even just using those two abilities in lane right now we're winning pretty hard okay Vigo right now is pretty strong if you can land both those abilities you can heal back up with your passive from the Q and it's going to be a good time for you, okay? So let's just shove this in. Again, when the champs leave lane like this, it's very easy to shove them in. So I'm using my Q and my W on the wave here. Another thing you could do is you could use your E-Mist just to get some of that extra attack speed here while you're in the mist to just shove waves faster, okay? So let's just say this was your game here. You kind of shove the champ out of, out of lane. You can get an early back off if you wanted to. We're maxing out that Q. We're getting closer to level 6. Okay, so now we can build an item. Ideally, first back, you would love to get the Vampire Acceptor um, as, as Vigo. We don't have that right now, so we'll just pick up some long swords. You could get some extra potions if you didn't have the exact money here, or whatever build you want. But essentially, we're going to try and get that long sword. That would be an ideal first back, 900 gold, and you could probably piece out a lane, come back with the Vamp Scepter, and be in a pretty good spot. So let's see if we can kill this Wukong right now. We have Flash and Ignite, which is great for us and our kit because um, we're basically like a fighter slash assassin, so that's going to really help us secure some kills. Let's see if we can use our passive on him here to kill him and take over his wraith so you guys can see what I mean by taking over somebody's body. So we're going to stun him, auto, auto, Q, auto, auto. We're just going to keep this trade going now because we have a Conqueror fully stacked here. Q's back up. We're going to ignite him. We're just going to keep fighting him, stun him. Okay, so now there is his wraith there. If I attack that wraith with an auto attack, I become Wukong. That means now I can use all of his abilities right on waves. I can also use a free cast of my ult if I'm level 6 and I could I could have used a free cast of the ult when I'm level 6. Okay, So that just helps you with the reset on your R. So we'll show that again later when I kill uh, Wukong again, but you're gonna get free passive procs on your ult, which is amazing, right? Like that's basically pentakill champion. So let's run top lane here just to show how you can use your mist to get to lanes or fights a little bit faster. So we're gonna cast it on, let's say, some terrain here. It's gonna cover that whole terrain. That lets me run up to top lane a little bit faster. Here we go. And now we can use our W stun to start this fight and engage if we need to, okay? So here we go, right? Double W, her, Q, auto, auto, and let's say I alter and I kill her, I can take over her body, and now I get another free cast on my R. But first I can use my abilities as Lux here, and you can see I can cast them again, and then take over another body. So it's kind of like a domino effect. Every time you kill someone, or, or helping to kill someone, you can take over their body, and then you get another passive, or sorry, another proc of your ult for free. Okay, so resetting champion, mobility, damage, no mana, um, dashes, like I don't know what else I can say, there's so much to this guy, right? So here, W, auto, auto, Q, auto, auto, we're fully propped on our conqueror, he's still fighting, I can cast the E for more attack speed here, I can W him again, auto, auto, 
Q, auto, auto. He's going to be up there. We could flash and now take over his body again, right? Like, it just keeps rolling. And now we can use all of his abilities on the wave, too. We can get another cast of our ult for free since we took somebody over. Okay, so a lot of resets on this champ, a lot of fun ways to interact with enemy champions, and every single game will slightly be different as a result. So, again, like if you're a guy or a girl who's playing League and it's like you don't know which champ is your favorite and you're playing a bunch of different champs every single game and your friends are like, oh, why don't you just one trick? It's like so much better for you. Just try and play Vigo, honestly, because you can play a bunch of different champions at the same time, but you can also pour a bunch of games into one champ and maybe start to climb pretty effectively okay now in terms of max it out another ability here a lot of people like to max out e second uh depending on obviously if you're playing him jungle or or lane um it's a little bit up to you in play style i think right now the the best optimization is to still max out the e you're getting a little bit more move speed and a little bit more attack speed on that and the cooldown goes lower if you're choosing to max the w essentially you're getting more damage okay the cooldown does not reduce if you max that out. So a lot of people right now, at least in the first kind of week, two weeks of Vigo being released, are choosing to max that E out as a second ability. Okay. So again, just in terms of the wave here, I would just be hesitant if you're picking him up for the first time. Don't just spam your abilities on the wave because you're always going to be pushed up and you won't be able to kill people. If you want to kill someone in lane early in the game before kind of late game or mid game, it's much better to have them closer to your turret so you can run them down. Okay. So even here, here. I'm just going to let this push a little bit more. I might thin out the wave a little bit as it's coming in. Maybe I poke him a couple times with Q while he steps up. But then I'm really looking for an area to kind of get him dead when I can chase him down like that with my ult. Okay, and you can see here we turn into Wukong again, which is great because now we're going to have some good wave clear on this. And again, I can use my ult passively, just a free time here. Every time we get uh, we get a wraith, we get that free um, alt from the passive. Okay, so guys, that's Vigo in a nutshell. Um, he just was released pretty early on, but I th again, pretty straightforward champ. I think the complexity from this guy really comes from using his passive properly, and knowing all the different champs' abilities. But that's part of the fun of it, right? So pick him up. Let me know how it goes, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.